Hello, Distinction students. Welcome to another amazing series of classes. Well, I'm going to be taking you on everything about this. Of course, I'm going to be looking in details into what is called the breast anatomy. So, under the breast anatomy, also known as the mammary gland, I'm going to be taking you on step by step on every singular thing you are supposed to note. The first step is this. If you are not yet subscribed to this channel, ensure you kindly do that. And then download the Learn Lifts app where you have all your classes well structured for you from the beginning to the end. You have your PDF notes, you have your CBT questions that you can run with, and every single thing is just available there for you. So welcome to an interesting part of your, bre of, of your gross anatomy called the breast anatomy or the mammary gland. In this class, I'm going to be taking you on a total of nine lovely stuffs. So if they ask you, to write on the gross anatomy of the breast or write on the mammary gland. So they are expecting you to write all these nine stuffs. I'm going to be taking you on. Of course, the first year is introduction to the breast. Number two, I'm going to look at the location of the breast. We we'll look at the shape and the extent of the breast. Then we go quickly into the relations of the breast. Wow, so important. And then we we'll look at the structures of the breast. Then we go into the blood supply of the breast. Then we look at the nervous supply of the breast. And then we look at the lymphatic drainage of the breast. Then we cap it up by looking at the applied anatomy of the breast. So these are the nine things expected of you to write in a standard anatomy exam under your breast anatomy. So you are not, you are not permitted to play with any part of this. Take everything very, very serious. Grab your writing materials and follow through as we wrote together. So... Under the introduction of breast, what are we expected to note? Please note this quickly. If they ask you, write on the introduction of breast, it's very simple. Just tell them what breast is. So the breast or the mammary gland is a modified sweat gland. So breast that you see is a modified sweat gland. It is a sweat gland that has been modified. And that sweat gland is present in the superficial fascia of the pectoral region. Now, hold on. The superficial fascia of the pectoral region as a name and that is called the pectoral fascia of course we have the pectoral fascia and then we have the deep fascia so the breast or the mammary gland is a modified sweat gland present where in the superficial fascia of the pectoral region and that superficial fascia of the pectoral region is called the what the pectoral fascia period very simple another thing is this take note that the mammary gland is found in both sexes oh the hold on hold on let me say something here so is there a difference between breast and mammary gland only two of them are the same? Actually, if they ask you in exam condition, write on the gross anatomy of the mammary gland. Of course, they ask you to write it on the gross anatomy of the breast. Anyone they ask you is the same thing you will write. But please understand this with me very quickly that when you hear mammary gland, mammary gland is a feature of all mammas. So all mammas have mammary gland. But there is a special name that is now given to the mammary gland of female. Are you getting it now? Yes, that is called breast. Oh, yes. So, please understand this now. That the mammary gland is found in both sexes. Are you getting me? It is rudimentary in male. It is rudimentary in male. Or become well developed in female at puberty. That's why I say that after puberty, almost all females have what breast. Exception of um, some female that theirs is now very tiny. But nonetheless, every female have what breast. Very important. Now... Understand this quickly, still under the introduction, you can see this guy, that this guy, instead of his own breast to be rudimentary, it's more like well-pronounced, well-developed, right? Oh yes, we can say that this guy is suffering from your gynecomastia, or the guy's gynecomastic is a condition where on rare occasion, the breast of meal become enlarged. And since it is enlarged, it is, this condition is known as a word, your gynecomastia. The same way females go for breast screening, to go and screen their breast for breast cancer, the same way this guy will also go for breast screening. Are you getting me now? Of course, very, very important, he will go for mammography examination to check for breast cancer and the rest of it. Now, this is it. In females, the breast, they form an accessory sex organ. So, note this, that breast is a sex organ. Is he a primary sex organ or is an accessory sex organ? Of course, it is an accessory sex organ in the female reproductive system. And it has a lovely function. And what is the function? Of course, it provides milk to the newborn baby. Are you getting it now? Of course, breasts provide milk to the newborn baby. Mm, some male will not allow their wives to rest anyway. So we provide milk in both ways. But this is it very quickly. 
now that you get the introduction of the breast, you must know the location of the breast. Where is the breast located? Uh, it's located in the chest. It's located in front of the chest. No. What is the location of the breast anatomically as a medical student? Now you should know this quickly that the location of the breast is that the breast is located in the superficial fascia of the pectoral region. We are in the pectoral region, superficial fascia. Please, that is the location of the breast. Are you with me? Another lovely thing you should know, still under the location of the breast, is this: we can split, we can, sorry, we can split breast into four quadrants. If we split the breast into the four quadrants, what are we going to have? Of course, let's say this year is the first quadrant, here is the second quadrant, here is the third quadrant, and here is the fourth quadrant. Now, you can say that in the first quadrant we have here, this first quadrant here, it is called the upper inner quadrant. So, if we have upper inner quadrant, why do we call it inner quadrant? It is called inner quadrant because it is close to the midline of the body. That's why it is called the upper inner quadrant. Now, the other part here, which is the, which is the second quadrant here, is called the what? The upper outer quadrant. So, we have the upper inner quadrant, the upper outer quadrant, the one that is medial is inner, the one that is lateral is outer. So, we have the lower inner quadrant and the lower outer quadrant. But let me say something here. The one we call the upper inner quadrant, can we also call it superior? Of course, anything at this midline, from this midline and above, can we call this side here superior? Yes. So if it is superior, will here be supromedial or suprolateral? Of course, here is the supromedial, here is the suprolateral, here is the infromedial, infromedial, and then here is the infrolateral. So, we can call the upper inner quadrant, the supromedial quadrant, the upper outer quadrant, the supralateral quadrant, the lower inner quadrant, the infromedial quadrant, and the lower outer quadrant, the what? Infrolateral quadrant. Don't forget these four things I just gave you now. Look at it. In the supralateral quadrant of the breast, this side here, this is the supralateral quadrant or the upper outer quadrant of the breast, you see that there is a small extension, right? This small extension is getting into the axilla and as a result is from what is called the axillary tail of spans. Now understand this with me very quickly that a small extension from the supralateral part of the breast is known as the axillary tail of spans. Now this is it. This axillary tail of spans does something wonderful. It pierces into the deep fascia and extends into the axilla. Meaning the axillary tail of spans, instead of it to be in the soup, is, sorry, meaning the axillary tail of spans, instead of it to be in the superficial fascia, no, it's not there. It pierces into the deep fascia and it will extend into the axilla. There is a reason why it's going that way. This is it. The axillary tail of spans is the site of high percentage of breast tumor. Mm. Meaning if a lady comes to the hospital and then you suspect breast tumor, please, where is the first point of contact there? Axillary tail of spans. Why is it so? Because it is the site of the high percentage of breast tumor. It's so because there are a couple of lymph nodes that are scattered around that area. When we get to lymphatic drainage of the breast, I'm going to throw more weight into that so that you understand it some more and in details. But please, understand this with me very quickly. You can say here, that if you split this breast into four quadrants very quickly from this middle, you split it into four. What you can see, you can see that this is tumor, right? Or cancer. The cancer is where? At the supralateral quadrant. The same cancer is what you are seeing here. So, the axillary tail of spans, you should know, it is the site of high percentage of breast cancer. Why is it so? Because it extends from the supralateral part of the breast or the upper outer quadrant of the breast into the way into the axilla don't forget this another lovely thing quickly i want you to go tight is this very fast you can see from this diagram here you can see the axillary tail of spans right oh yes now the axillary tail of spans very quickly that you can see it now has like an aperture in which it is passing through right that aperture is called the foramen of langa so there is difference between the axillary tail of spans and the foramen of langa let me strike it for you. The aperture in that deep fascia, not in the superficial fascia. Are you getting it now? So that aperture in the deep fascia, through which the axillary tail of spans passes into the axilla, that aperture is called the word the foramen of langa. So anytime you hear the word foramen, it means canal, lacunal, aperture. Are you getting me now? So the, the foramen of langa 
is that aperture are you getting it now in the deep fascia through with the axillary tail of spans passes into the wear axilla now let me show you this now look at it very quickly you can see here that here is the foramen of langa you can see that this is the foramen of langa and then this side there is the axillary what tail of spans are you getting me but you can also strike that we're also trying to say that this is the breast you can see breast you can see nipple you can see areola so how do i know the difference between the theory of the the breast the nipple the areola let me show you something very quickly look at this beautiful breast that you can see here right now where is the breast in particular this is the breast so if this is the breast this is the nipple now the the nipple is different from the breast of course there is a location where the nipple is found now as we proceed in the class i'm going to tell you all the landmarks where you should know and then this here is the areola what's the areola areola is nothing but um that dark region that surrounds the nipple but sir this breast i'm seeing in front of me everything is fair here this is hoibo breast not black breast are you getting me now so um the dark region around your breast that you can see that dark region there is called the what areola are you getting me now that you understand the introduction and the location of the breast let's look into the shape and the extent of the breast so i'm going to dwell on two things there shape of the breast first and then we'll look at the extent of the breast so how does the breast look like wow well, does the breast have shape yes breast has shape now this is the shape of the breast you must know the shape of the breast is hemispheric bulge so the breast is not just um pendulum in no 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 the shape of the breast is what hemispheric bulge hemispheric bulge hemispheric bulge now look at this lady quickly sure you can see the way her breast is looking right how is it looking hemispheric how bulge that is the shape of the breast anatomically understand this quickly very very fast that now that you know the shape of the breast that the breast is hemispheric bulge but uh, sir is it not conditioned that the breast is hemispheric bulge actually um there are factors that can affect the shape of the breast i'll teach that on the structures of the breast now let's look into the extent of the breast in details what is the extent of the breast oh yes is it that the breast will just run down now get to a place now decide to stop no breast has extent yes now the extent is either horizontal or vertical let's look at the first the vertical extent of the breast the breast vertically it extends from the second rib to the sixth rib so not the landmarks i'm giving to you from the second rib down to the sixth rib that's where the breast run from now look at this diagram very quickly you can see okay if we are to look at the rib landmarks here is the first rib now here is the second rib you can see quickly that here is the third rib here is your fourth rib here is the fifth rib and then here is the sixth rib we said that the breast extends from where from the second rib down to the sixth rib now this here is the second rib here this is the landmark of the second rib you can see it quickly the second rib all the way to the where to the sixth rib this is the extent of the breast so the breast extends how vertically vertically from the second rib down to the sixth rib don't forget this what about horizontal extent of the breast oh yes in the horizontal extent of the breast let me show you something very quickly you can see that there is um, um okay in the skeleton of man there's what is called the breast bone or the sternum right oh yes now this guy here this here is the sternum the whole of this quickly this is the sternum or the what's the breast bone now if this is the sternum sternum has the lateral borders of course we can say that this is the lateral border of the sternum this also is the lateral border of the sternum so if you watch from this lateral border of the sternum all the way to the mid axillary line mid axillary line so what do we mean by mid axillary line axilla is the armpit the middle of the armpit now look at this lady thank um you can see that her hand is widely opened right now the middle of this armpit here is called the mid axillary line are you getting me now you can see from this location from this location down to this location this is the horizontal extent of the breast so where is the breast extending from it extends from the where lateral border of the sternum to the mid axillary line that's the horizontal extent of the breast that's why we say horizontally it extends from the where lateral border of the sternum to the mid axillary line don't forget 
from the lateral border of the sternum to the mid axillary line. So this is the horizontal extent of the breast. What about vertically? It extends from the yes, second rib to the what? Sixth rib. So this is the extent of the breast. What about the shape of the breast? Hemispherical what? Punch. Are you getting me? Now that you get this, guess what? We're going to end here for this particular class so that in our next class, I'm going to be taking you around everything about the relations of the breast. If you're not yet subscribed to this channel, kindly do that and then run through all of these classes in your breast anatomy. Enjoy.